We will see in the next chapter that aromatic compounds have separate special reactions that they do. They don't do a whole lot of reactions, but they do some important reactions. But before we talk about that, we want to talk about some reactions on the side chain. So we're looking at things in the benzylic position, which is the carbon directly attached to the benzene ring, directly next to the reactant the benzene ring. So we're going to look at four reactions and ultimately at the end of next the next chapter we'll start putting some multi-step syntheses together and putting some of these reactions together to make different compounds and you'll see how that all fits together. But for now let's look at the four and the first one I want to talk about is oxidation. So in oxidation a, car, a benzene that has an alkyl chain Generally, it doesn't matter how many carbons there are. There, it, there has to be a proton there, and I'll show you an example where there isn't one that, where that wouldn't work. But generally, we can oxidize that. I'm going to use sodium dichromate. Uh, oops. That's a 7. Looks like a 2 that I wrote. Um, I'm going to use sodium dichromate um, as our oxidizing agent, but there are other ones that work. Potassium permanganate also works. There are some other oxidizing agents that work. But the reaction occurs at the benzylic carbon, at the carbon directly next to the uh, benzene ring. We won't worry about the mechanism of this one, but you'll notice regardless of the carbon length, how many carbons are attached, you will get a carboxylic acid here. We'll oxidize completely to the carboxylic acid, so you would make a benzoic acid carbon compound. As I mentioned, you do need to have a proton there. So something like this that has three carbons attached. There is no hydrogen on that benzylic carbon. So if we tried to do this reaction, make sure I put a seven there this time. You'll notice that NR, no reaction, that one will not work. And I'll show you also if we had, let's just say we had a methyl right here. If we had two groups, um, both of them would get us oxidized, assuming we, had, we added excess oxidizing agent. The second reaction that occurs at the benzylic position is reduction. So generally we'll have some attachment that has a pi bond on it, and so we learned that this is called styrene. And we can do a catalytic hydrogenation. And this one, let's do um, palladium on carbon as the catalyst there. And it will not reduce the benzene, right? That, that's stable. There's something special about that. But it will reduce the uh, vinyl side chain. This, the benzene, the, I mean, the double bond will get reduced straight to, the, to an alkyl group rather than an alkeno group. All right, this also works if you have a cyano group, a cyanide group here. So let's do hydrogen, let's put nickel as our um, catalyst here. And this one would also reduce, since it's a triple bond, it would reduce twice to form the amine. The third reaction that we'll talk about at the benzylic position is bromination. Remember, bromine is a good leaving group, so this could be handy to be able to add a bromine in the benzylic position. So if we have our benzene with some sort of alkyl group, it could have more than three carbons, but some sort of alkyl group, and we will use our brominating agent that we talked about when we talked about free radicals. So we'll use NBS and heat. And remember, once again, this is going to react at the benzylic position. The free radical is going to be formed at the most stable possible point. And so you will simply add the bromine right there. We won't worry about the mechanism of that one, but that one's fairly simple. Um, regardless of how many carbons, it will be always at the carb, you will always add directly at the benzylic, the one directly next to the benzene ring. The last reaction that we want to talk about is a specific reduction, and that is the reduction of a nitro group that is directly attached to a benzene. So there's not a whole lot of variation that we can do right here, but if we add a nitro group, so we have nitrobenzene right here, there are a couple different ways, but the catalytic hydrogenation works very well. And so that will convert the nitro group into an amino group, simply a reduction. So that's handy to do. We'll learn later that we can do something with the amino group, so this is a handy reaction to know.